So, Mandy, uh, every season of Homeland is unique, and every season feels ripped from the headlines. Do you guys ever feel like it's difficult to keep up with the news that's going on in the world uh, and what you're doing in the show? Well, it certainly is overwhelming, but our writers stay on top of it. They stay very loose and, uh, and very much able and willing to improvise with the truth that's coming across our thresholds, at each and every one of us, not just in America or Homeland, but all over the world. And, and, they, and they embrace the necessity to stay right up to the moment and put that truth out there in the most uh, accessible way to our audience as possible. And I think this year they have achieved it in ways that I never even imagined. This business of fake news and the truth, which have become the two prominent characters of the whole season to me, uh, is astounding piece of work that, uh, as far as I'm concerned, our writer staff deserves a Pulitzer Prize for. Absolutely. I for Saul, uh, this season finds him at odds with the agency that he's worked at his whole life and, and uh, learning new, or searching for the truth of certain things. Can you talk a bit about that? Yeah, I think Saul has a moment this season, unlike the past six seasons, where he makes the real first true mistake of, of maybe his professional career. Not that he doesn't get himself in hot water in other ways, but really the biggest mistake he made was this season where he felt he was so concerned about being thrown under the bus so that someone else can be indicted and, and the humiliation that would cost to his reputation, his life, work, and his future, that he started to run. And then, as often is the case, the wisest person in his life was his wife, in this case his ex-wife, but still his wife, who said, when did you ever care about that? You know, what do you care about? people humiliating that's not who you are that's not what you care about and he wakes up and he realizes that it's not about him it's about all the vulnerable people in this world and he calls back his mentor and and the gifted human being that he's found in Carrie Matheson and says you know I'm here I'm back and he gets right back in the game uh, sacrificing himself if need be and not caring about himself caring about those who need attention uh, paid to more than anyone else in the world. And so that was an amazing moment for Saul to, uh, to stumble and, and for a moment think that this world was about himself and to then wake up again and go, that's not who I am. It is not about me. It's about all those vulnerable people out there that desperately need me to try to make this world a safe place. And whatever I can't do, Carrie Matheson can, particularly after I'm gone, my life and my hope and my dreams for the rest of humanity are in her. And speaking of Carrie, I mean, the dynamic between the two of you has always been so interesting, this sort of father-daughter relationship that she's now. Can you talk a bit about how that's developed over the last few seasons? Well, it's very strong. I mean, what the writers have created have been not a simple relationship, but one with great friction at times. But at the end of the day, he literally believes that she is the greatest hope he's found. And so they both understand uh, whatever their mutual gifts are, that, uh, that they are dependent on each other other to help other human beings. It is not about their individual issues with their family, with her in particular. She is there to try to be the best mother to her child, but she also has one of the most profound gifts for humanity at large, and she knows it, and he knows it. And so when the fire is burning, when the building's burning, he knows that I don't care what differences you have with me. I don't care if you're angry at me because I'm your father figure, your mentor, or whatever. We have to put our feelings aside and take care of those who desperately need us. And I think that's a pretty noble relationship to emulate, that people, no matter how complex their relationship is, that, that they're not there to serve themselves. They're there to serve the greater good and humanity that is so vulnerable and need them so desperately. Thank you so much.